back and we're gonna get this game started for you very very soon this has been a long two days to get to this point one finalist awaiting one of these players and just 75 minutes standing in between their hopes and dreams trying to be NAIC champion I did see both of these players watching the other semifinal with a lot of attention here in the backstage they were definitely trying to figure out if you make it past your opponent well it's never bad to be able to take a look at what you might be up against and I'm sure Cyrus will be doing exactly that right now Ian Robb of course a two-time regional champion Vancouver and Indianapolis just within the last two years world's finalist in the junior division and junior US national champion so no stranger to the stage and no stranger to the stage Rowan Stavano of course world champion and regional champion recently in Hartford Connecticut incredible trajectory for these two players coming up from such a young age and now at here at the Masters Finals must feel pretty good almost the Masters Finals the Masters Semi Masters Finals, Semi -finals. Right that's exactly <laughs> what I meant <laughs> <laughs> they are both trying to make it to that point and it is going to be a pretty great matchup at least I'm hoping we're going to start off with the mulligan for Ian Rob there every time you mulligan you don't have a base Pokemon in your hand your opponent gets to draw an extra card for each one Let's hope there's not a lot of those. Indeed, it never feels great to give extra cards to your opponent. Not on purpose, of course, but those are the rules of the game. And when the pressure is on, when you're up against probably the toughest opponent you've faced all day, you definitely don't want to start off by giving them an advantage. And we see a second mulligan happening right now. Two cards now for Rowan. Of course, you can decline to take him. There's some instances where you would do that in the past, but I'm not sure right now. You always just want more cards. More, more is better. Yeah, more is almost always better, especially with the rules that we have in the game right now. Both players looking to have a strong early setup and extra cards, of course, increase the chance of that happening. We'll have to and see. Of, and of course, it's always important to make sure you put your prizes out before those mulligans. Yep. Start off with a small infraction here, so nothing too crazy being prized. One Ralts could be um, not great for Rowan. None of the prizes really other than maybe the Darkness energy could matter too much for Ian Rob. And we've seen this matchup in the past, um, especially today. I think we're in for a good one, Jeremy. I tend to agree, especially with someone as good as you, Pablo. <laughs> Thank you, that's very kind of you to say. Can I get this started? Both players flip their active Pokemon. Spiritum versus Arceus. Can the Spiritum factor in? There is Aluminium V being played by Ian Rob, so that is already turned off as a potential option. Now the Spiritum could go down eventually, but for now, no Aluminium V for Ian. Rowan starting things off with a level ball. We'll find that Mew from that celebration set. That Mysterious Tail ability has been proven time and time again to really help out this Gardevoir EX uh, deck in general. Just trying to dig for that turn one battle VIP pass. Yep, turn one battle VIP pass. That, that's a lot of level balls. That is a lot of level balls indeed. Now, there are many times where you want to grab Mew. There are other times where you also don't necessarily want to grab it as the end result would be the same amount of Ralts or something on the bench. Uh, right now, getting that battle VIP pass would definitely be fantastic. And thinning three cards with those level balls certainly helps increase the chances of you finding that important piece. And one of the important pieces is Radiant Greninja, just being able to cycle through those energies that you draw for two extra cards as soon as turn one with that concealed card's ability, but Battle VIP Pass and Ultra Ball are really the only ways to find it out of the deck. And I do believe we're going to have an Energy Attachment Retreat and try to do just that with Mysterious Tail. Yep, I would imagine the Battle VIP Pass would find that. It's always nice to have 
an extra way to discard cards, and I like how Rowan doesn't. Okay, there and the Greninja go. was even <laughs> in the top three, too. Indeed. Trying to save as much time as we can here. Get the full 75 minutes of playtime. There's a Greninja. Now, Greninja, Triple Rolled. You definitely wouldn't like that Spiritum being down. I think like it does double minion, but it's certainly not essential. If Ian can avoid benching it, he definitely would like to do that. And now there's certainly no reason to bench it at all. There are those two Ralts concealed cards. Let's draw a couple cards here. Rare candy. Couldn't see the other card. Was it another rare candy? Uh, I think it might have been a super rug. Well, that means it's just the pass of the turn. No more search you can really do here. Double turbo energy is a huge find on this first turn for Ian. That's going to allow him to attack with Trinity Charge with this Arceus V. But I don't think there's anything else. It's just a boss's orders on that Radiant Greninja. Trinity Charge to charge up an energy onto the active. And that's it. Next turn, you can try to attack. But yep. Now, key decision here. Whether you attach more than one energy to this, Arcus, of course, doesn't need more than one energy, but thinning out your deck a little bit can be pretty important. I like the defensive boss play to make sure that Rowan has the hardest time trying to set something up. No extra energy attachments, but there is a chance you know, that we might see some turn to attack and potential KO. Six energies are required to do so with Shining Arcana, double rare candy as well. So it's not going to be easy, but it's certainly a possibility at this point in time. Three energy earning the discard, four now, thanks to that refinement from the Curlia. The face that Rowan's making, I'm not sure if he has it just yet. He's mm -hmm. forced to play in Iono. Yeah, these are the sort of bittersweet moments of Iono where you see how your opponent definitely doesn't have any sort of nest ball. Might have Wolf Trouble, but um, not necessarily. No supporter as well, other than the boss's order. So Iono will help you, might help your opponent. I feel like against an Arcus V Star deck, you really can't rely on them not hitting the V Star. So I like this Iono play. Um, not sure. I mean, it feels bad, but it shouldn't have um, too many big consequences. You have to expect Ian is holding something to be able to advance his turn next one, turn. One card that's actually very likely is an Arceus V-Star. No opportunity to evolve it on your first turn. So the if Ian has that on the next turn, the hand is wide open. So you still got to get set up if you're Rowan here. Indeed. And now Rowan found Rare Candy, Gardevoir, EX, and Shining Arcana, and an Ultra Ball, and a Psychic. So not going to even try. Find the, find the last rare candy here, I guess. Yeah, I mean, rare candy into Shiny Arcana, give yourself the chance to win the game was something to consider. Maybe Rowan um, knows that there was a rare candy prize, and therefore it was impossible to do with one at the bottom. But certainly a possibility that could have happened. Now we do see a Fog Crystal. More energy hitting the discard pile. Going to be very useful for the session, and I wouldn't be surprised if Ian really tries his best to loss zone the session. The session, sorry. Session is a very crucial attacker for Rowan and the best way to get one hit chaos on Ian's Pokemon. So sending that Pokemon to a loss zone will be a priority here. Yeah, Zashian V just has a ton of HP for that Psychic Embrace from Gardevoir EX to really play around with. You can charge up a ton of energy, and we've seen it reach. 330 damage out of nowhere. Yeah, that high damage output is what makes Sashin such a powerful addition to the Cardover deck. Reversal energy, another factor into the Cardover deck, just getting bumped a little bit in power with Paldea Evolved, and that is why we see it at the very top. And uh, I, I think Rowan played down the Curlia and didn't use Refinement. And I, they're, they're joking about it. They're like, wow, your hand must be great. <laughs> yeah, whenever you choose not to draw extra cards, that must mean your hand is very, very valuable. But now Ian gets to play a few extra cards, does find that Nest Ball, 
we'll have to see what else he does have in his hand to follow this up. Ideally, you want to take a knockout here, power up your Umbrians, which are very key. And one cool thing to note is that potential mean look play on the Greninja. That is a possibility. I'm not sure if Ian knows Rowan's deck, if they've chatted, if he's watched some of his games. There's a copy of Switch, but if that gets exhausted at any given point, a mean look trap could be something to consider in this top four. Well, after seeing the potential of it earlier on today, it's definitely something we're going to be looking out for as well. Ian does have that Ultra Ball, though, so discards to rally it on VMAX and a Fighting Energy. Eyeing it down in Arceus V-Star, most likely, and I guess just deciding what you're going to star birth into if you actually want to use it right now. You don't need energies. You don't uh, consider disruption too powerful at this point with Greninja being down and double Kirlia. Even if you disrupt to a judge to four cards, that's an extra two, an extra two, an extra two. So that's too many resources. The judge is not very effective at this point in time. So perhaps a boss's orders plus a lost city could be a considerable play. That you don't even know that a Ralts is prized, but there's always a fairly good chance that one is not available and then forcing our opponent to only play with two of the evolution lines can make things complicated for them afterwards. Looks like Ian decides to save that Starburst, at least for now, attaches an energy to the benched Umbreon V and plays that Professor's Research, discards the hand, draws seven cards. So being more conservative with the V-Star here, I do like that as well. Um, it is a little risky now that Rowan has so many energies right in the discard pile getting ready for a potential knockout. If you power up the Arceus, right, which just got benched, but you don't find a follow-up Arceus V-Star somehow, that could be a little problematic. So calculated risk, I'm sure, but a risk nonetheless. Only attaching two energy there off that Trinity Nova. And now Rowan's turn starts things off with the Fog Crystal. That's going to be the eighth energy in the discard, Pablo. And I've never seen Gardevoir get that many psychics in the discard that fast. <laughs> it certainly is. And eight is the key number. Eight allows you to get down to, to get up to 300 damage with Sashin. Uh, nine is the key number to 1KO VMAXs at 330 HP, but eight certainly the number that you want to get to where Sashin just becomes unstoppable, really. Switch and Battle VIP pass found off the concealed cards. Gonna get rid of that pass. With Refinement, draw a couple more. Ultra Ball found here, so that could be... I guess you already have the Gardevoir EX in hand, maybe a Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Even the Zacian still needing that. Yeah, there's uh, Reversal Energy could also be a consideration if it was found. A lot of options here, but which path will Rowan take? More refinements, more cards drawn, no help in terms of the Reversal Energy. I think the Reversal would be the ideal play here. You don't offer up a two-price Pokemon. You get to use the reversal energy, which is not as easily done as you would like to. And you put yourself in a situation where you say, all right, Ian, you go after my card of EX. I'm going to take a return KO because I already have my attacker established. You let my card of EX live, then I get to power up Sasha and take a return KO anyways, and you only get one price card in exchange. Here is the supporter for the turn. It is an Iono. I'm going to shuffle the hand, place it on the bottom for both players. Ian's going to draw five, though, since he took that one prize off the Mew. And Rowan's still looking for that reversal energy. Does not seem to find it, but another... Oh, no, I thought that was a Gardevoir. It is a Corellia. All three extra draw power abilities have been exhausted. No reversal energy found and no way to search for Sashin either, so there definitely will not be a KO happening this turn. Is this a 
uh, Moonglow Reverse turn then, just soften up one of these Pokemon that can garner a bunch of HP. Definitely potential to do that, but if you do, then you have to be very careful where you spread your energies, because if you spread them all out, you cannot get them all back into a Discarpal next turn for either Guardi or Sashin, and if you don't, then you're not really doing any significant damage. So I like this play, maximizing the damage, not quite enough, but dealing 240 damage could lead to a Cresselia play afterwards, right, as a follow-up without sacrificing or utilizing a Ralts line, which are the key to this deck. Just 20 HP left on the active Gardevoir here for Rowan, but like you said, 240 damage on that Arceus V-Star. Now this is going to be pretty big because we know there's a Gardevoir EX in the prize cards for Rowan. There's a possibility where Umbreon VMAX comes down, Dark Signals with the Lost City, and then there's no Gardevoir EX for essentially the rest of the game. Indeed, and with the Ultra Ball Ian has in his hand, the V-Star ability still allowing Ian to essentially do whatever he wants right now. He wouldn't know that the other Gardevoir EX is priced, but Lost Zoning one Gardevoir EX certainly could be good. This is a nest ball here. At least get a view of the deck, get a plan out a little bit more. You have access directly to the resources you have left. You can see Ian's eyes going back and forth between his opponent's side of the field and his side of the field. I think that's very crucial in order to be able to be successful at this game. You not only have to play your cards, it's almost as if you have to play both sides of the table, predicting what your opponent will do, trying to figure out their best possible play and therefore preparing for their best possible play and accounting for that, thinking about the future, all key aspects of top Pokemon TCG players. It looks like just the knockout here for Ian with that Arceus V-Star Trinity Nova charging up both of the Umbreon Vs on the bench. Now, this still allows Ian to have access to Dark Signal later on. You go down to four prize cards after this. That means just the knockout on Gardevoir EX twice, Gardevoir EX, and then the Zacian yet again could seal up this game one. Indeed, and we've seen how dealing with one Umbreon VMAX can be difficult, but dealing with two Umbreon VMAX probably feels like an impossible task and double dark signal possibilities as well. Certainly something to be slightly afraid of, right? Usually if you get boss's orders, you know your hand is not getting attacked. If you get IO node, then you know your bench is safe. But that's not the case when there's a the possibility for Umbrian. And by establishing two Umbrians in play, you make it so that even if Rowan wanted to try and target down one of them, there's the other one, right? And we've seen certainly many, many games today where only one Umbrian was in play, it got sniped, and there was no more threat of the Umbrian. Professor's Research is going to discard a grip of cards for Rowan here, really digging to try to find something. Those rest of the cards weren't really doing much. There was the boss's orders, but it's not really going to get you there through the deck yet again. Now, there's Super Rod, which is pretty important. We can shuffle that Zacian back in the deck along with a, a Gardevoir line, maybe. Or no, Zacian's not even in this card yet. Yeah, Zacian has not seen play just yet. There was an Ultra Ult discarded last turn, which I found very peculiar. That could have been the way to find the Zacian. And I know you have to be careful with your resources and whatnot, but you also want to try and really initiate the prize exchanges, and that's something that Rowan has been super conservative about. Is the Sashen prized? No. I don't believe it is, right? There's a Gardevoir EX, there's a Ralt, but not Sashen, so you can... Oh, it's in hand. <laughs> it's in hand, all right. You can expect to be playing behind as the Gardevoir player most of the time, but you can't play so behind, right? And now with the bench full, no possibility of Sashen. Cresselia sniping the Arceus, a very powerful play. But this return KO 
on the Gardevoir EX from Ian, if that is what he's planning, could be very, very good. And this is also pretty important to Gardevoir with the Shining Arcana evolves from that Curlia. Rowan's discarded a lot of rare candies this turn, especially. I think two were in the hand. Use the rare candy to evolve that Gardevoir EX on the bench. If this Gardevoir EX gets knocked out, it's going to take at least two turns for Rowan to get another one, if he even had one in the deck. Indeed. And I really like this power up on the Gardevoir, preemptive power up, if you will. That damage will be healed off with the Moonglow right now, being able to kill this KO, this Arceus, and this will allow Rowan to really get to the nine energies that are needed to one hit KO an Umbrian VMAX. Those two preemptive energies means Cardiomary X can power up six in one go, plus the attached return. That's the perfect number to get a one shot. Now to see what Ian decides to do. Has Ultra Ball in hand, so access to that Umbreon VMAX is available. I wanted to play it, discarding uh, Arceus V and Duraludon V. Don't need those anymore. And we're going to see this powerful VMAX in this matchup. There's the Umbreon with Dark Signal bringing up that Gardevoir EX. The V-Star is still available for Ian to be able to search for anything he wants. And creating this situation where you have two Arceus V-Star and two Umbreon V in play means you have the flexibility. Whichever Pokemon goes down, you still have the exact same options available to you next turn. So there's no real preemptiveness that your opponent can do in order to eliminate options from you. You have all the options that you could possibly want. A lost city here would be devastating. Raihan grabbing an energy from the discard, attaching it to one of the Pokemon. Umbreon V is going to be the Pokemon of choice. And you get a search your deck for any card. You only play it when your Pokemon's knocked out. But that's exactly what happened last turn with that Cresselia. And we see the double Umbreon VMAX in play. KO the Gardevoir, no Lost City. Still V-Star available. And... Rowan Doesn't matter, scooping it up anyway. Scoops it up. Ian Rob goes up 1-0 in the match. And just too fast of a start for Ian there. Had that turn to Arceus V-Star and didn't even need the star birth for the entire game. Had everything in hand. Professor's research found everything else. And it is sealed up for that first game there. Arceus Duraludon one game away from his finals. Indeed, and Arceus seems to have always worked historically well for Yen. He did win a regional last season with uh, an essentially an arc pile deck of sorts with Intillion back then. Different strategies, but Arceus V-Star carrying Yen to this game one in top four. Now, Rowan did the best he could with the prizes that were kind of laid out. That Temple of Sinnoh is something that's pretty good early game to try and stop that, stop the bleeding from Arceus V-Star, and then having that 101 Gardevoir X prize. We'll have to see if things are a little bit better for him now. Another Ralts in the prize cards, go along with the Rare Candy and a Boss's Orders. Well, Ian, Ultra Ball, Arceus V-Star, nothing too bad. Nothing too bad, that Lost City in there once again, nothing special. Uh, Sprint to start for Ian could make Rowan's um, early aggression with Sashen not available, right? No Roar of the Sword to power up. Not necessarily a path he will take a lot of the time, but Rowan is actually putting that Sashen in the front, so I wonder what the plan here could possibly be. I mean, maybe his hand is so good that it's probably conducive to a potential um, turn to Gardevoir, EX, KO on an Arceus, perhaps. But that's a big ask. That's six energies in the discard ball, as presumably a boss disorders as well, since the Arceus is not in the active. And no battle VIP pass off of this Mysterious Tail will make this even harder to pull off does find the Fog Crystal, though, so that we'll be able to fetch another Vaults. And 
with an energy attachment for the turn. We can at least get that on the Zacian V. But again, like you said, that Spear Tomb, no Roar of the Sword. No Roar of the Sword. So Greninja was not prized. So really wondering if that was the right choice here. We're going to see the attachment onto the Sashen, or maybe not. I think Rowan might be realizing that Spirit Tomb is in play. I really would have preferred to see a Radiant Greninja there. Give yourself extra card axes. I don't think Rowan's hand is very good at this point. And there's the Roar of the Sword, oh, but and there's the Spirit Tomb. <laughs> Spirit Tomb. <laughs> Fettered Ups. in misfortune Roar for sure. That is quite the misfortune for Rowan. Fettered in misplay could be the name of the ability as well. <laughs> That's <laughs> rough. Who are you and where'd Pablo go? <laughs> no, I mean, it's definitely easy to have that oversized rhythm. It's not a common card to see. Rowan started last time stopping the potential Luminion for Ian. Now Ian started it. Stopping that Roar of the Sword does come into play. And you did see Rowan shuffle the deck at the end. That's just shuffling after the Fog Crystal. He was thinking it was going back in, so you always want to make sure you get that shuffle when you look through the deck. Now, Ian uh, does have Arceus V with the Nest Ball there. Yep, Arceus Energy. You don't really want anything else on your first turn as an Arceus player. And it's like you have one goal, right, on turn one. All the other decks have, you want to bench a bunch of Ralts, you want to get Archeops in the discard pile and bench Lugia. Arceus keeps it quite simple, quite straightforward. When you don't get it, it feels really bad. When you do get it, you feel like you're set for the rest of the game. Well, that awkward hand from Rowan gets shuffled to the bottom of the deck as Ian played Niono here. Six cards for both players, and... Yeah. Rome found that Radiant Greninja. At least has it in hand to go along with what looks like a Curlia. Yeah, Rowan's hand definitely improved. There's still the potential for a turn to KO with that Sasha and a Rare Candy Carnivore EX. Many things here, but if that had been a Radiant Greninja, yeah, prioritizing setup over aggression. I understand there's a pressure of the time and whatnot, but we do have extra time in top four and in top cut, so Rowan should have plenty of time to, if he wins this game, play out a game where time isn't a factor later on. Cresselia found, but you're not going to have much space for that with this Radiant Greninja. Concealed cards, draws two. Level Ball and Psychic Energy, that's honestly perfect. Level yep. Ball grabs that Curlia, Psychic Energy you can get in the discard and hope to continue this train going. Need access to extra cards. This is definitely what you want, right? As a cardy player, you want those cards in the discard, those energies in the discard ball, extra card access each and every turn. And I think Rowan needs to be more aggressive this game than he was last game. He was content with trying to keep it as a single-ish price tag. Here we need to see hard, fast aggression from the Tashin that has now been committed into play. So even before the refinements here, we see an energy attachment to the active and Niono. Reversal energy found. That might come into handy later. That's something that Rowan's been kind of searching for uh, in a lot of games. Yeah, Rare Candy, Gardevoir X looking a little bit difficult at this point in time, but the refinements certainly helping out. More deck sending, which I really like, and... Rowan in a precarious situation. If he's able to be aggressive here, perhaps take a knockout, that would be nice, but Ian does have the possibility to target down that Sashen, will not be getting a KO, but the damage on the Sashen would prevent it from getting powered up afterwards with the Guard of Warriax in order to take a KO and therefore not really maximizing its potential. And then if that hits the Lost Zone, it's no longer accessible. We see a little bit of hesitation here on whether Mew has been utilized before or after the yeah, Iono. I don't believe it had been used. So there we rare see the candy. rare candy. Was there a Gardevoir X in hand? Yeah, it was drawn off that second refinement. So rare candy, Gardevoir, 
is in hand. Is there enough energy spread throughout to take... Well, I guess you take a knockout on Spirit Tomb anyway, but... Yeah, only one energy necessary in the discard pile, which I believe we do have. Now, committing the card of War, which you know is safe, as there's no energy on the Umbrian. There is a world where Ian could potentially go all trouble away on energy, and then Raihan to power up the Umbrian and take a return KO onto this card of War, and with Starbirth, that's not impossible to achieve. There is that Miracle Force, thanks to the Psychic Embrace. Three energy on that Guard War EX. Six damage. And Arceus V gets promoted to the active spot. There is also the potential to find the Ultra Ball Energy Raihan play with Starbirth as well. Just depends on how good Ian's hand is after a couple eye on him. Indeed. Now, the promotion does mean that... Wow. Whoa, all right. There it is. All right. Not going to the Umbrian. Maybe Ian's hand is just not good enough where he needed to do this. That being a dark energy, maybe that opens up the play. Uh, certainly high risk, if you will. But the promotion of the Arceus means that that was definitely not going to be Ian's path as it would just cost you an extra energy to do so. And if Rowan was able to find return KO on that Umbrian somehow, then you're left with an energy less Arceus and out of your V-Star probably, out of your right hand. So playing it more safe, doing this damage on the Gardevoir and Rowan's aggression certainly paying off here. Ian thinking through what card to grab with this Raihan. Looks like it's going to be the Arceus V-Star. And with that, you can now star birth and we're going to see it for the first time this match. And even though Ian is already up one game. Yeah, Search your deck for two cards. <laughs> Incredible that we are 30 minutes into <laughs> this top four, <laughs> and this is the first time we were seeing the V-Star. I mean, at most, we would have seen it a second time, right? So yeah, yeah. It's not that impactful, but or impressive, rather. But double Umbrian, very key here. Um, Alakazam hitting the field once again. Now going for the Umbrian aggression to make sure that you do take a prize card. Attacking that card where X would be a little bit of wasted potential from the Arceus' turn. And also, the three energies that are now stuck on this card of X, you can promote that, retreat it, but there will still be one energy left over right there, which means getting a return KO with Sashen will be just a little bit more difficult. Or even the Shining Arcana card of War. It's one energy that is not in your discard pile. A lot of the time it forces you to bring up that Gardevoir EX after a KO just so you can retreat it, but then that limits the amount you can Mysterious Tail throughout the game. Now, there is a path once again for Row 1 to win the game by taking any of these two prize Pokemon and then finishing it off with the Umbrian, which is certainly going to attack at some point in the game. The Dark type is very useful in dealing with the card of our EX. And that's why we see the benching of the Alakazam. There's a lot of potential for the moving around the damage to be useful as extra ways to prevent some KOs, some retreats, uh, putting preemptive damage on the Sasha so it can't be powered up further. And with Rowan's path to victory a lot more clearer now that he's taking a price card, you definitely want to take advantage of that painful Spoon's ability. Off the refinement, boss's orders, psychic energy found. We're going to have a Shining Arcana Gardevoir here. Get another spin at the wheel. Look at the top two cards. You also have concealed cards. Not a lot of energies in Rowan's discard pile right now. Can get two more thanks to the retreat. It does have energies in hand, but Greninja already having been used and this card of war is no longer a Curlia, so no more refinement to discard extra cards. Sometimes you want to discard, sometimes you don't. When you have such a low amount, you definitely miss that refinement. Eyeing down a potential Super Rod here, but just shuffling back in a Ralts, and this is due to the fact that when Ralts is still prized, you have an extra Curlia in your deck, you have Rare Candies in your deck, but you need that basic Pokemon, just so you can get your powerful evolutions in play. Yeah, man. There was a time, yeah, I'm going to sound like an old man right now, but there was a time 
back in my day when you could bench a Pokemon <laughs> and immediately very candy it into a stage one or a stage two. That is no longer possible, but that was really, really cool when you could pull it off. It really changed the dynamic of stage twos back then. I but can't believe you just back in my day, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pablo. Oh, I could have done that many more times this week, but I've been <laughs> holding back. Boss's orders could be the option here. There's a ton of cards in hand for Rowan, but no energies. Just a lot of items and supporters. Now, and that's four energies. That's one short of the knockout with Boss's orders. This energy trapped on Gardevoir X could prove problematic here now. Usually when I say these things, something immediately happens where they get the energy into a discard ball, but we see the reversal energy attachment. Both players tied 5-5 five to five in prizes and one energy short. Five total energies. I mean, definitely short on the Arcus V-Star. Also short on a boss KO. And knocking out the Alagasam. It doesn't matter at this point in time. Or well, am I doing my maths wrong? Yeah, I did the 200 HP, yes. you get the boss KO <laughs> on the Sumbreon B, and that's pretty stellar. Yeah, I was thinking Umbrian had 220 HP, so definitely enough to take this KO. Very relevant. Would have preferred to just knock out the Arcus V-Star and save that boss's orders to target down the Umbrian to close out the game, but Rowan does run three boss's orders in his list, so paving the path for victory here. And that Umbreon VMAX on the bench now looking like a big liability for Ian. Arceus V-Star coming down on that bench, a little more HP. There's a double turbo energy on that Umbreon VMAX, so now it can attack if it wants. And then Iono to disrupt Rowan a little bit, only going to draw three. And like you said before, no refinement left available, just that Shining Arcana. No more refinement, only... Oh, wow. Lost City found. This is going to get rid of the Zacian V here. Yeah, the Zacian now in the Lost Zone means it's going to be a lot harder for Rowan to take some big knockouts. And I think another big deal here is the fact that, sure, Reversal Energy is activated, but Yen has been on par and even on prices. So until Rowan loses more prizes than Ian. You know, that reversal energy is only a colorless energy. Yeah, it doesn't even count towards the brainwave from Gardevoir here. Uh, really, you can only just try to use it to retreat. Yeah, the previous damage on Gardevoir also makes it basically impossible to get to those key numbers. 280 damage, you, or 300 rather, you require six energies total, and you now can attach one less through Gardevoir EX's ability. Mew is brought to the active after that KO. Gonna have access to Mysterious Tail, but all the items that you would really need, you kind of already found. Level Ball here just to thin the deck out. Gonna find that Ralts that was put back in with the Super Rod. Gonna have to rely on uh, Shining Arcana. I, I didn't see the hand. I don't know if there's a supporter in there. Maybe a boss's orders? Yeah, perhaps a boss's orders. Like, even if Shining Arcana were to hit double Psychic Energies, right? And then you go attach from turn, that's three Psychics. But that 20 damage prevents Gardevoir EX from attaching six. You can only attach five. Rough situation to be here for Ro, and I think this is going to be the turn where he starts falling a little behind. And then Ian all of a sudden knocks out the Mew or the Spiritum, whatever Rowan decides to sacrifice. Maybe even the Gardevoir, if he decides to do some damage. That puts him at two prizes and one boss's orders away from Umbrian taking down that <laughs> Gardevoir EX. I think that's the biggest arrow you've drawn this yet. <laughs> Shining Arcana did not find any Psychic Energy. Just the two cards added to the hand for Rowan here. Collapse Stadium among them. A couple psych or one Psychic in hand. You got Cresselia. This might be a turn where you just kind of take it off and Moon Glow Reverse for a little bit. Still has access to Concealed cards, though. Mm -hmm. A few more energy in the discard pile. A few more cards for Rowan. 
But something that's really appealing as a card of War deck or as a card of War player, you always get extra cards, right? You get Ionode, you have ways to draw. Extra. Any energy literally becomes extra resources, and you thin through your deck so much that it's really, really good. Now, Collapse Stadium being drawn. That could remove a Gardevoir from play, but then how do you power up your Pokemon? Could remove a Spiritum, is that really doing anything for you? The Cresselia, you just benched, you probably want to use that to do something this turn. But Rowan's Path to Victory looking bleaker and bleaker as this turn goes on. I even kind of like not removing the Spiritum just because it's an extra Psychic Pokemon you can add damage to to make this Moonglow Reverse a little bit better. Uh, you want to hit at least an Arceus V-Star for 100 if possible, because that way you can clean up with a Miracle Force from Gardevoir EX. Yeah, certainly, but promoting that Gardevoir EX at any point basically loses you the game, especially if Rowan isn't able to take a KO here. So, in a slightly complicated position. Now, something important to note, Cresselia's Moonglow reverse attack will heal the damage on Cardover EX. And because Umbrian VMAX has the double turbo attached, it is now dealing 140 damage. Through weakness, that's 280. But if Cardover EX only has 20 damage on it, that is not a KO. But if you include the painful spoons moving damage from the Mew, since it has 40 on it, that is enough. Yep, that was 20 extra damage on Mew. Could actually be problematic. Now, you get a switch, right? Get that card over out there eventually. I don't know. Yeah, it's just boss's orders. Yeah, boss's orders. We'll see. You collapse Stadium away the Mew, and all of a sudden there's no more damage in play for Radiant Delicacy to manipulate. That feels super, super advanced, though. Um, and we see the Moonglow Reverse. So no Collapse Stadium yet, but definitely a possibility. And it is 80 damage on that Umbreon VMAX. Trying to prepare for that three prize knockout, potentially. Ian has an Ultra Ball. Gets rid of a couple Duraludon VMAX that are doing nothing this entire matchup, because it is not the matchup for those VMAX cards. It is an Umbreon matchup, 100%. Definitely. Now, if Ian just had a boss of orders right here, goes after the Gardevoir, takes the knockout thanks to damage on the Mew with painful spoons, and that would be game, right? No Gardevoir EX to power up, no way to take a knockout, one prize remaining, but I feel like if that was there, we've seen Ian play in the past, we've seen Ian win in the past, he already would have played that card. Yeah. I do feel like with the grab of the Duraludon V, it might be an Iono, might be a Professor's Research here. The only real reason to grab Pokemon other than thinning out the deck is just so you can get rid of it for the future. Yep, exactly. Iono put at the bottom so you drop better cards, research it away so you're not running into the Pokemon. Something that at different points we saw today uh, that perhaps players could have done with things like Artisan and whatnot, and were not doing, and then all of a sudden they were drawing those Pokemon in their hand. You've said it time and time again uh, throughout this whole weekend. You've got to maximize those percentages to have the best odds at winning each game. And they add up oh. a lot. Wow. Slow was rolling the there. boss here. Brings up that Gardevoir EX. Painful Spoons moves the 20 from the Mew, and this Umbreon VMAX all of a sudden taking in the knockout on the only Gardevoir EX in play. There's no way to get a Gardevoir EX in play next turn. Is there See, a what the big arrow does? Yeah. See what the big arrow does? <laughs> <laughs> it's there for a reason. Now, with the Gardevoir, with the reversal energy here, if you Shining Arcana to Psychic, attach for the turn, that's six. That's what, 210 damage. That's not enough. 20 short on the KO. How do you Did do it? One price left. Nothing can survive a hit from this Umbrian at this point in time. Sashan is in the Lost Zone, so that cannot be recovered to even 
tank for a turn. But that just delays the loss by a turn. And I think we're seeing Rowan go through all possibilities and might finally realize that there's no chance. Now, the Lost City was still in play, so the Guard of War should be going to the Lost Zone after that knockout. Not sure if that's relevant, not sure if that will matter. We'll make sure to get that anyway. Uh, does Pokemon do belong in the Lost Zone or something? Potentially like a Super Ron that could pl be played, but I think Rowan's going to try to find as many energies as possible. Now, was there an energy left in the well, I guess there was energy left, but you would put 20 damage on the Gardevoir. If that happened, he still wouldn't have had enough? No, he would have. That would be 240. Yeah. That would have taken the knockout. So not attaching that last energy on the discard to that Shining Archon of Gardevoir made this potential play possible for Ian. And honestly, I think Ian has pretty solidly wrapped it up here. I, I generally cannot fathom what is a possibility here uh, what Rowan is playing towards. I'm, I might be missing something. I'm trying to check the deck list. There's no Pokemon available that can withstand a hit. It's maximum potential damage at this point, which is not quite enough. Rowan is really just going through everything. No reason not to. This is one of the biggest stages we have thinning down the deck but you can see it on the body language for Roan he knows the writing is on the wall and it's in permanent marker that sigh indeed even if we can pull this off let's yeah six energies 210 plus the 80 290 still not quite enough one energy away from the potential KO Maybe powering up extra energy on the Gardevoir was the way to do it here. Professor's research. Drew into the switch card. Shining Arcana attached one energy. And Rowan saying, oh, I was so close. Touch for turn. Switch. So there's five energy. That's 210. <laughs> I think Rowan didn't realize how much <laughs> HP Omrin um, VMAX has, and, and that wraps it up. With off. that, Ian Robb is moving on to the finals to face Cyrus Davis. What a game. 2-0 and up against Rowan Stavano in what was the last Gardevoir that he'd have to face before trying to take down Rapid Strike and Talion or Shifu. That's going to be quite the match. Cyrus felt like she was really confident about the match. She said it was uh, favored going first, a little unfavored going second. I'm really eager to see how that goes down tomorrow. Ian Robb is no stranger to winning big tournaments, but has not been there for the international championships has won the junior division for US Nats now trying to 